don't even know where to start today because I have had such a roller coaster of emotions this weekend. So I got my baby. Um, I kept her for the weekend. I had all these plans for me and her to make up for not being able to do what we were supposed to do for her birthday weekend because of all the drama. In fact, after that drama, I didn't see my baby again until Halloween. And then I got her this weekend. I don't know. I guess because this was the first time I actually saw my ex-husband face-to-face in a couple weeks. It just really hit me. Like, chick, this is y'all's relationship now. I didn't even know how to speak to him. I, he wouldn't even look me in my eye. It was like he couldn't get away from me fast enough. It was just weird. And I guess of all the things that my ex-husband had ever done to me, could have never predicted this. I could have never seen this coming, that we would be in this space with this type of relationship where we don't, we don't talk, we don't speak. So many like things when I come across an inside joke or a movie or something that I want to call them because always these inside jokes with us. It's not our relationship anymore. And I just, it's hard to wrap my head around. But it also doesn't hurt as much as it used to. I'm not going to say it still doesn't. Every now and then I have a little wave of heartache that says, yeah, bitch, it's still reality. He really did that to you. You are not tripping. <laughs> this is not a drill. <laughs> I don't know. It's just hard to believe that this, this is our our life now. We're the other couple that divorced and can't stand each other. And then he actually said, like, I, I told him, I was like, well, clearly, I, whatever you feel like I've done to you, I've never, not in 10 years, ever done anything to deserve what I got from him. But whatever I did to you, clearly you hate me. Clearly you hate me. Clearly you can't stand to be around me. And he was like, well, no, you hate me. And honestly, no, I don't. I'll say it a million times. Forgiveness is not for them. It's for you. For your own sake, you're going to give that shit away. And I did. And I found reasons to be grateful instead of harnessing hatred. Because at the end of the day, all you did for me was a favor. You allowed me to see your true self you revealed your true feelings you exposed who you really are and your true intentions so that I could make informed decisions which I was never able to do in the past because all I got was the mask and the lies well this time you decided just to be com your complete true self and I actually for the first time got to meet you and so, no, I don't hate you. I can't hate you for being who you are. I'm grateful that you finally allowed me to get to know you so I can make an informed decision on the position and power you would be allowed within my life. How much energy and time and attention I should give you. You helped me define the relationship in a way I couldn't before because I didn't have all the information. And I am now establishing boundaries so that I don't end up in that same position again. So, no, I don't want to have small talk or talk to you like we friends from way back. But as you see, when it comes to our daughter, I'm completely collaborating with you to make sure she has everything she needs. Despite the fact that you went on a whole campaign to make sure everybody felt that I wasn't shit to you and I wasn't shit as a mother. I know my truth. And one thing about it, I am a grown woman that is also able to face her mistakes. If I do wrong, if I did something wrong, if I make a mistake, I am grown enough to not only apologize, but rectify. I haven't got so much as an apology or explanation as to why any 
of those events transpired in this last month. Oh, except for a text that said, I just said those things because I was mad. Okay. I mean, what do you want me to do with that? All right. Well, let that be the reason. And let's move on with life. But it is what it is. But being single again is so awkward in 2022. Yeah, I guess that's the best way I can explain it. First of all, it's a whole social media, internet hookup foundation to it now. And again, I'm a people's person. I like to look in your eyes, feel your energy, you know, see how you move. I can't do the you know, send a friend request. I accept DM. Hi. I DM back. Hello. My name is such and such. Hi. Nice to meet you. And dick pic. The fuck did I do to deserve that shit? Can can I at least get your last name first? I mean, or I get people trying to become my sugar daddy, showing me a bed full of money, talking about send me your cash app. No, the fact that you are searching for somebody to become a sugar daddy for on Instagram that you don't know and all you have to go by are a couple pictures. Yeah, I'm good on that one. Then when you are out at a club or a restaurant or in a store and you meet somebody, nobody knows how to look up from their phone and have a conversation. Even if y'all make eye contact, men are so afraid to approach women now because we done confused the fuck out of them. You know, I'm a woman, but I can do everything a man could do. And I don't want, I'm not no weak woman. Don't want nobody open doors and shit. But then there's the other one that's so damn needy that they let send the men running for the damn hills. I'd be confused too. I think what I needed to do before any of that, I needed to be by myself. And I, I realized that after this last altercation, I need time to heal. You know, I need time to reintroduce me to me you know date myself for a second i have dreams and goals in life that i needed to be starting to put my energy into that that's where my energy needed to be focused working on me my goals my dreams my healing my spiritual walk you know my growth my empowerment my evolution because i've never taking the time to do that before and so honestly as many people that try to talk to me or date me they have been rejecting a lot of people because I'm just not in that space right now I'm actually learning to enjoy the peace and quiet enjoying my own company I just needed some time to myself just for a second you know give me you know a little while I'll be ready to jump back off the porch but right now she isn't ready. We want to distract from the heartbreak, the pain, or the anger, or the resentment by jumping onto another lap and not realizing if you haven't figured out the root of whatever it is that allowed you to bring that type of situation to fruition, it's going to happen again. Because everything that happens in our external world begins with internal conflict thoughts feelings inner child healing that needs to be done shadow work that needs to be done these things manifest our world we create our world it's our choice whether we want to change it or not but we get so stuck in the negative aspects of life that we forget that there is power in our hands we are not hopeless or helpless or victims Definitely seeing my ex today made me realize just how far I've come because the two years it took to get that divorce, I did take that time to work on me and research and learn and grow spiritually. And 
it's because of that when this situation happened i didn't react the same way i didn't get caught up in my emotions to the point that i couldn't move forward i didn't fall for the the bullshit and you know my spiritual eye remained in tuned and was able to intuitively discern situations without even having all the facts honestly I can't tell him how I knew half of the stuff I knew. It just would come to me. And he would tell on himself because I guess he was so thrown off at the fact that I would say things. And I can't be more grateful, you know, because at the end of the day, I got to see exactly who he was and how he felt about me. Exactly what I can expect from him. Now that I know, I can make informed decisions so that later on down the line, not blindsided or caught off guard or looking stupid or making dumbass decisions because I didn't have all the information I needed to make an informed one. So no, I don't hate him. Not in the least bit. I miss him actually because I actually was in love with my husband. That's why it was easy to be faithful. That's why it was easy to forgive him. That's why it was easy to try to work it out. But I got so lost in trying to make that work that I lost me trying to figure out how to please him. And if you are with the person you're supposed to be with, you don't have to change who you are in any aspect, neither do they. But the both of you will cultivate each other, uplift each other, and you will evolve together haphazardly. It'll just be a natural function of life because when you're in love, you always want to do better for the person you're in love with because you see them as a reflection of yourself you know that's an extension of you just like your children and you want to do what's right for the people you love it's easy you don't want to hurt them you care about their feelings you provide their needs you want to be better and have more in your life so that you can give them more it comes natural if you find that these are complicated things to do to respect to communicate to be faithful that's not the person you're supposed to be with if you find it being a constant battle or tug of war it's more like they're your enemy than your best friend it's not the person you're supposed to be with if you're together for some years and have no progress economically emotionally mentally spiritually grown together have something to show for the amount of time you have been together it's not the person you're supposed to be with and you're wasting time and energy with that being said, all I can do is be grateful for everything that's transpired because it gave me the information and tools I needed to move forward. Every day is another day that I have to mentally tell myself not to go there when I get caught in my emotions or my missing him or getting mad about the situation and get caught up in my feelings. I have to tell myself, readjust that thought right now, ma'am. You're better than that. And at the end of the day, it's time to move forward. All those situations you're dwelling on are in the past, meaning they no longer even exist. You're holding on to nothing. Let it go. Move forward. Trust. Once you let go of certain things that were never meant to be a part of your life, you make room for those things that were destined for you. And you will be so grateful, so ecstatic, so elated at the fact that this is now your life. You let that go and this is now your life. This is the new peace and happiness and joy you get to experience because you let go of the bullshit. You can't be mad about that. At the end of the day, all I know is if loving the wrong person can feel that good, Oof. Just wait till you find the right one.